everybody in YouTube land. Clinton here with Oval Window Racing. Thanks for joining me back in the garage today. And as you can see, we're going to continue working on Grease Pit. Um, I've got the um, flywheel on, got the crank and everything inside the case. Now it's time to kind of set an in play here. What I've done right now is I've torqued down the uh, flywheel um, without any shims in it. We need end play shims. On the classic Volkswagens here, they take three, generally three uh, end play shims. You can't can get away with two. It's best to, best to use three, that way you have a lot of oiling surfaces there. But as you recall in the previous video, um, I was having trouble with the uh, crank not wanting to spin freely in the case due to uh, the rods kind of rubbing on the case a little bit. Um, but I got that situation all resolved here. Everything spins around in there nicely. As free as it should be. And it rocks back and forth nicely. So what we got to do is get the uh, measuring equipment fastened on and uh, get a good reading here. And uh, what I'll probably try to do is uh, get a good reading and then I'll undercut the sizing a little bit when I add the shims there just for safety reasons. The last thing you want to do is uh, over tighten um, or have too many shims in there because then you're going to wind up over tightening the flywheel up against the rear main bearing there. And that will cause the rear main um, bearing to uh, bind and bend and you'll, you'll, you'll pinch it and ruin it and then you'll have to start all over again. So let's get the measuring equipment. All right, got the uh, dial indicator on. Let me get centered up here. One of the things I like to do is take one of these uh, paint markers or a Sharpie or something. just like to mark one of these uh, teeth here. Get a little paint on here. Probably should have picked a brighter color. Let's see if I got a brighter color. Try purple. Oh yeah, I can see that. I like to do that, that way I know where, uh, oh, I got a phone call, hold on. I'm back. All right, that was something about my urgent uh, car warranty. I needed to call them back before my case was closed. Uh, I don't have any warranty on my car. <laughs> I don't need any warranty on my car. Anyways, um, back to the point I was talking about here. Uh, I'd like to know if, um, where the uh, 360 degree mark is on the flywheel just so when I'm spinning it around to check the, uh, the run out, I know I've done a full revolution. Um, it's hard to do that if you don't mark the teeth because they all look alike. But uh, Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's uh, let's get back to here. Um, first thing you need to do is to set the dial indicator here to loosen it up, and we're going to set it to the zero mark. Down, and now we're going to push in on it. And it looks like it's 10, 20, 30 thousandths. But what I'm going to probably try to do is I'll probably try to put. 25 to 30 thousandths uh, end play shims in there and then take another reading. Um, what we're shooting for is the book says it to have the end play should be between three to six thousandths. I like to try to get it around four to five thousandths. You don't really want to go too tight but yet you don't want to go too loose. Um, the reason we're doing the end, the end play here is um, when you're running a clutch on these things uh, the pressure plate has a tendency to when you push the clutch in and let the clutch out um, pushes on the flywheel and um, and retracts on the flywheel and uh, so you basically bang in the flywheel and the clutch back and forth or a fly, a flywheel uh, back and forth up against the main bearing and what you wind up doing in the long run is pounding the uh, rear main out on these cases. The cases are just aluminum and all that constant banging back and forth. Uh, we'll, we'll put a wear and tear on them um, but you don't want to go too tight because if you get them too tight you're going to basically heat the, the rear main bearing up and actually cause it to swell and lock. And you'll actually lock the main bearing right to the crankshaft and that'll seize the engine up and uh, you'll be having a bad day. Um, so let's go see if we can find some in-play shims. 
All right, got the flywheel back on, torqued, uh, and the dial indicator's back on. So the, let's take another measurement. It looks like that's all the way out. Just down to zero. I don't like this little thing here. I don't even know what that thing is for. We'll put it back down to zero. And see what the inlay is. I think I got about about six thousand cent play. And we'll rotate it around. Watch out for the holes. Make sure it's 180 out. Set this back to zero. Three is six. So yeah, we're 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 uh, six thousands at the three sixty mark, and about six thousands at the uh, one eighty mark. So uh, I'm gonna actually switch out the dial indicator on this thing because this one's moving all over the place. And I want a good reading. So let's hold on. Let's get that set. Yeah, we're swapping out the uh, dial indicator here. Uh, I dropped that one years ago, and the uh, back was cracked on it, and. Just throughout time and years, it seems to crack more and more and more, so it's probably going to be unusable from now on. It's a good thing I got a backup. Just don't drop this one. All right, let's go back to the uh, zero mark or the 360. Could call it top dead center. Pressure on there. Set this to zero. Okay. And click it down. Yeah, this one says four thousandths. About four and a half thousandths. I actually kind of like that. Now let's rotate it around. Three hundred and eighty more. Four and a half thousandths on that one too. Now we'll check the run out. Run out, we'll get down here on the clutch surface. Start it at the 360 mark. This time I'm going to press in on it and set it to zero. And we're just going to slowly rotate it around and see how many thousandths it moves. Thousands difference. Actually, mm -hmm. two, so that's like three thousandths. And it looks like we got very roughly about two thousands run out, which is really, really good. I've had engines with more than that. Um, I don't like to see more than five thousandths. I put two. I put two shims in there, roughly about. Took up about 23,000 uh, space, and I'm at four and a half thousandths end play. I think I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, I'd like to run three shims, but uh, you can get away with two. Let's get the uh, flywheel back off, and I got another trick to show you. Now, when it comes to removing this big um, gland nut, which is gland nuts like an inch and a half, um, you may need a little help. I got Mr. Persuasion here.
So like I said, these things are torqued on there usually pretty good, and then if they've been on there for a while, sometimes it, you may need to result to an uh, impact. But I didn't torque it down that hard, so just a little bit of my weight helps. Like I said, this is a inch and a half. Um, factory's 36 millimeter. But this is a nice chromoly scat gland nut, and uh, they make them just a little bit bigger. It's a nice, beautiful product. But what I wanted to show you, is we're going to take this uh, paint marker again. And we've got these, uh, these uh, dowel, dowel pins on here in the flywheel. This is an eight dowel uh, um, crank with an eight dowel flywheel. Factory was only, they only use four dollars, but for extra crank, uh, extra crank, extra strength and security, um, the, the trick is to drill and uh, use four more dowels, dowel pins. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to paint two of the dowel pins and part of the flywheel, so I know how this bugger goes on here, because it only goes on one way. <laughs> so if you got eight different tries before you find the one way. Um, and, and this this helps. This just save you time. All right, here's the uh, shims. This is what the uh, end plate shims look like. They come in different various thicknesses, and you can stack them in there um, to make your measurement the way you want it. All right, now that I got that done, um, what I'm going to wind up doing is actually taking a note because um, I can never remember anything. But I I, I, I do this on just about every engine I build, um, kind of uh, deck heights and wad uh, wad rate. I can talk today. It's been a long week. <laughs> uh, rod weight and uh, piston weight. And then uh, I kind of got some measurements on the cam. I have no idea what the cam is, but I kind of got a, a lift here so I got an idea when I put the rockers on um, where we're going to be at. But uh, I'm just right down here that in play reading was a four and a half thousandths. And run out. Was approximately uh, two and a half thousandths, which is really really good. You don't want all the run out is uh, the wiggle of the, the flywheel and it goes back and forth. If you get one that's too much, you're gonna have weird vibration. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, what I'll do when I go reinstall the uh, flywheel for the final assembly, um, I'll probably um, take another reading just to make sure that I'm a uh, close to this, um, hopefully right on. Um, but I'll, I'll actually wind up torquing um, roughly 400 foot-pounds on it. It may squeeze down hopefully about another half thousands. So we're shooting for about four thousandths in play. All right, well that's that. Um, thanks for joining me this evening. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment down below. Um, suggestions? It's like I got a race. <laughs> Might be time to fire the bug up. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, uh, comments down below, suggestions, uh, if it's something you may want to see in the future, uh, uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. Um, uh, next step is going to probably be uh, um, cleaning up the cylinders, uh, putting new rings on the pistons, and uh, getting a good deck height reading. And uh, um, look forward to seeing that. Um, be safe. Catch you next time. Kick it.